On Ticker, this is Import Export with Lawrence Christopher. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining Import Export here on Ticker. I'm your host, Lawrence Christopher. Uh, yet again, another huge week in international trade, everything going on around the world with coronavirus and the impacts on supply chain, on business in general, um, some, some really serious times. So today's show, we're really trying to support companies, especially in international trade, around how to protect themselves, how to reinvent themselves in many ways around maximizing their effectiveness and their productivity around the situation and how companies can take things off, uh, off the uh, physical space into a virtual space and digital space. So we've got a, a, a range of incredible guests for you today. Uh, kicking off with uh, some two experts who are on the panel with me this morning. Firstly, Brian Goldberg, founder of, of uh, Trademark Ventures. Thanks for joining us, Brian. My pleasure. And we've got Ernest Stebeck from SIP, a reality coach, which we're gonna talk about that in a sec as well. So thanks, Lance. Thank you both for joining me. So I'll kick off with you, Brian. Now so many companies are, are really scrambling to go online, get digital, and you now I'm a huge follower of what you've put out on, on social media. Um, but first of all, actually, I'm going to take a step back. Tell us first about Trademark Ventures and what you do, and then I'm going to throw some of these questions. So I'm, yeah, sure, I'm sure, that, that's right. So <laughs> Trademark Ventures, I started it over seven years ago, and, yeah. and with a big focus on protecting brands. Yeah. And we do that via trademark applications, trademark prosecution, and we do that internationally. And, and the trend back then was all these startups emerging that wanted to be digital and online, a lot of apps, and then suddenly they were exposed globally. So what we look at protecting brands globally as a, a principal service. Yeah, and you know one of the things that uh, is, as I mentioned in the opener, companies now are scrambling to get their online presence up to speed because you know, all of us want to be better online, but we've, we've been, I think, especially in Australia, quite complacent and a bit lazy in, in, in taking our brand online. but. One of the really interesting um, things is that we don't really realise how, by putting it out online, how does that in impact our intellectual property of our brand? So, you know, the digital brand protection, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, and, and you're exactly right there, Lawrence. It suddenly happened, bang, how's our digital brand looking at the moment? Yeah. Uh, not so good. So, it, it is actually a busy time to catch up. Basically, the trademark laws are the same. You, you need to protect a brand as your trademark, and it needs to be distinctive and not descriptive, and, and hopefully no one else has got it for your goods and services. So the principles haven't changed, but what's changed is that you're online. That means there's a few other features you need to integrate into your brand for it to be a savvy digital brand. And the biggest factor is you're suddenly exposed globally. Yeah. The whole world can see your so brand. So like having a product in, in, on shelf in <laughs> one market, you can control that to a degree. That's right. Yeah. So you, you're suddenly exposed globally and trademarks are probably slow in terms of the legal system. So it's jurisdictional based. So we're still only getting slowly filing per country at the moment. Yeah. Whereas bang, online, your global brand, keep up or, or, or lose it all. So what happens if someone, uh, you know, so if ATL said Australian Trade and Business Corporation, now it's got the word Australia in it, so it's sort of, sort of protected. <laughs> so you know, someone in Myanmar is not going to create an Australian Trade and Business Corporation. Yep. Hypothetically, if someone wants to take my digital brand and run with that in the market, what recourse or what should I be thinking about? So at the moment, if someone copies you exactly, we have grounds to uphold but there's there's people that imitate very well at the moment mm. and they know that unless you've protected it in their jurisdiction then they've got every right to use it and there's not much you can do yeah. even though you're global so how do you define a jurisdiction digitally uh, that's a, a very good question at the moment my answer is commercially okay commercially where are your markets mm -hmm. now and where do you want them to be mm -hmm. Uh, and then when times are, are good and bad, you want the whole world. <laughs> yeah. It becomes expensive and hard to get, but you want the whole world. Or are you focusing on just the US? And if I get the US, I'm satisfied, so I've got to focus my energy and resources into protecting my brand in the US right. as, as a strategy. So commercially, yeah. that's, that's a decision. Great. 
Ernest, I want to bring you on in on this conversation, if that's okay. But again, firstly, can you tell me about SIP? And I really would love you to explain to the, the audience around a reality coach and why that's so oh, okay. Um, well, look, I coined the phrase because people are struggling to put together the fundamentals of growing businesses. So um, I started out 15 years ago with SIP, and the last eight years I've been focusing on the startup scale up and uh, advising some very large corporations as well. So it's mainly, I work on two spectrums. One is uh, helping people mature, mm -hmm. and the other spectrum is helping their businesses grow as well. And that includes everything from basically getting them to be able to articulate in simple English what it is that they've got. So that's the problem definition, or it could be go drill down into what benefits they're gonna provide to their customers to that level, all the way through to potentially well, yes, I was drafting an IM for an organisation. So uh, it's a broad spectrum, so some of it's personalised and coaching the individuals involved in the business, and the rest of it's really grounding them to the core functions that they need to prepare for growth, one of which is obviously brand and IP protection. So it's a critical element, which I just recently spoke about, where I where I said that it's equally as important as setting up the bank account. So, yeah. Well, one of the really important reasons I, I asked you to be on this morning's show is because with everything going on with, let's say, the lockdown, if you like, in yep. business, all those previous strategies and value propositions all have been turned on its head. So many, especially SMEs, yeah. have to rethink from yeah. ground up. Well, the fundamentals haven't changed, okay. so cash is king and yeah. that's always been there. So yeah. I think every business needs to conserve cash. I think on the other side, it's a period of time when this unusual disruption that we're experiencing through the pandemic creates an immense amount of opportunity. Yeah. So it's people need to be curious, explore, and seek alternative business models in some instances, because the traditional ones are going to fail. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And from, to both of you, yeah. from an international trade perspective, if, I'm a, if, if I put it on an importer's hat, so yeah. you know, obviously we've had the whole supply chain bottleneck, all these products that have been, you can't get your hands on, and the, sh the shipping, transport, there's been a whole range of situations uh, still we're only just starting to sort of slowly reactivate, if you like. But from a, a, a brand protection and a strategy perspective, what advice would you give to importers, first and foremost, um, around rethinking the current climate um, for what products they're bringing in or how they want to promote those products as a brand here in Australia? Um, and to yourself, and others, you know, what do they need to rethink around their supply chain? Is there, are there strategies that, um, you know, that they really need to look at? As you said, cash is king, but obviously the supply chain controls the flow of product. Yeah, it's interesting you asked that question. I was on a call earlier today where we were exploring the challenges of uh, toilet paper that's happening at the moment out there in the supermarket aisles. And we were talking about the concept that that isn't a data problem that's actually driving that activity, that it's really a supply chain yeah. issue. It's the logistics of being able to shift from just-in-time activities to the traditional old models that we might have of storing goods in advance for clients. Uh, the challenge with that is when to switch from one model and pivot to the other so that you don't get caught with a whole bunch of stock in the, in the, in the supply chain. So incredibly challenging times. I think the fundamentals don't change. I think people need to reconsider their advertising strategies, marketing strategies to be more online and digital. And that's that's certainly a, a trend. So in the last two weeks, I've been on a podcast, I've run a Zoom, you know, 45 people event. So people need to start experimenting. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Just before I get to you, Brian, we're going to take a quick break. Yeah. So stick around. We've got plenty of here from Brian and Ernest. Um, and join us after the break. This is Import Export with Lawrence Christophelts. Welcome back. Uh, just continue with our discussion. Brian, I want to ask you, so what makes a great digital brand? What should we be thinking about, especially from an import or export app? That's a good question. Digital branding may not be that new, but the question of what makes a good digital yeah. brand yeah. is the question that you have to work out now yeah. that everyone's online. So firstly, your brand is going to be promoted online. Yeah. So how do you do that? Let's go traditional at the moment with Google. 
your brand has to be Google search savvy. Yep. So it needs to be a clear brand that's distinctive so that your product appears or your services appear if Googled. Yep. So that's the number one, it needs to be search engine. SEO, search engine optimization. Search engine optimization, but on the branding perspective, if you write a word in and all your competitors come up because your brand's confusing, it's not a good digital right. brand. Yeah. You want a clear, concise, distinctive brand that when someone searches, yours comes up. That, that's what I was looking for, not, oh, look how many are similar. Yeah. Number two, what makes a good digital brand or, or, or moving into the digital branding is, can you sell your brand or product online? Can you actually make money is the second step. Mm. And that's now forcing companies to say, well, no, you come into our shop, come into our warehouse, yeah. we'll come to, well, you can't do that right now yeah. anyway. Yeah. So can you sell your brand online? So they search for you, they click and buy you, yeah. it would be great. And that's, that's irrelevant whether it's a service or product-based business. That's right, in fact, services are improving the opportunities now yeah. being a service brand. And the third element of what I term a good digital brand is that you engage and interact so on social media platforms. Right, right. And so you bring the brand in to life yeah. and that the, the consumers engage with the brand. Yeah. So those three elements of, of being searchable brand, being able to sell your brand or products or service yeah. and, and online means you're, you're digitally successful and then engaging through social media gives your brand some really good valuation and strength and, and making money at at the same time, and right now, oh. if you ever got to be a good yeah. digital brand, I'd, you have to I'd be jump in. Yeah. Well, you mentioned that Ernest about the opportunity that exists now, and yes, it's dire times and it's yeah. quite um, confronting for all of us. Mm -hmm. But like, what it, it, it creates a major opportunity, as, as Brian's alluded to as well. What should companies be thinking of doing? Well, I, I think the most important thing is that they have to be, they have to actually stop, think, and reflect, which means they need to really be open to options. They've got to be ready to pivot if an opportunity emerges in the marketplace. Those that are already out in the digital landscape are probably ahead of the game, mm. so they have an opportunity to leverage from that. And key, key message for particularly the import-export companies, don't forget your customers. Yeah. This is a critical period of time. The method of communication is changing. We don't have these large corporate offices, everyone's working from home, yeah. so get on the phones yeah. is yeah. my recommendation, yeah. that you increase the amount of communication, the frequency of that communication with your customers to make sure that you're there to be able to observe the opportunity and take advantage when it occurs. Yeah. If you've got stock shortages, that's going to be a challenge. Everyone's going through that relative time. It's still building the confidence of those relationships that you've got for those weathered times. Yeah. I love the view that after the dust settles and things start to get back to normal, it'll never be the same. People yes. will be used to working remotely. There'll be a total shift in different maybe working hours. And I think to what both of you are saying, whoever embraces this opportunity now and the better prepared and faster and more agile they are, yeah. they'll actually reap the benefits many, many years after this, once things get back to some sort of normality. Yeah. That's right. And, and an example of that is at the moment schools may be shut down. And so we looked up on Google online tutoring, online education, right. the leading brands, one actually from Taiwan and one from the US, had dominated that digital tutoring branding area. Wow. And now now it's their time. Yeah. So so the, the barriers of travel for countries in import export are there. Mm. It, if if you savvy and you're a good digital brand, yeah. opportunities are coming fast. Yeah, yeah. It's now's the time. That's right. Nice. So and just with um, with the marketing and brand and communication, yeah. the relationship now with cons customers and stakeholders, let's yeah. say even with your suppliers and customers, it's hard to be on the phone these days. And even now, people are still. I mean, I look at um, you know the younger generation, probably younger than us, but you know they don't even call people anymore. They just text. You know, there's, there's hardly any vocal dialogue. Yeah. But how do we? I think sort of you know tapping into the, the same vein of what Brian's saying is that. As every business, we need to really ramp up our communication strategies Correct. that incorporates, on, especially online, social media, yep. all these platforms. Yeah, it's about broadening that suite, but also experimenting to find which one's going to hit the sweet spot with the customers. Yep. So don't be shy of uh, diving into the digital divide, if you want to call it. Mm. Um, I think you've got to be encouraged to go out there and experiment. That's why I'm saying these are options. Um, the people that tend to put 
all their eggs into one channel tend to fail so in these periods of time so you need to broaden that loop so really have good conversations the physical connections are harder at the moment which is my standard model is human to human yeah. um, but in reality people are still open to a conversation so you know if you want to you can have a virtual cup of coffee there's no problem with that that's yeah. my mantra is the cup of coffee yeah. uh, there's lots of different ways to do that but I think I think the key thing here is that they have to remain open and curious mm. and they need to support the people that are around them so whether that's your employees whether that's the customers that you've got going through we're all in this together and people tend to forget that that you're not isolated you're not single being singled out yes people are under various levels of pressure if you need help call out and ask for help because for, from my perspective it's a sign of significant strength when people actually stand up and say hey i need a little bit of help on my brand i need a little bit of help on my import export activities uh lawrence and and um and, and therefore they need to be brave yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right and i think traditional um, marketing and traditional uh, top of mind brand positioning yeah. has all shifted now. I mean, yeah. when people aren't driving, well, driving less down the street and you're not gonna get any magazine publication type of promotion. I was listening on the radio on the way in and you know, people who would typically have the footy record going out to the footy, there's 300,000 people in a week who yeah. may be potentially buying the footy record and that's all gone. Yeah, there's no crowds at sport anymore. Yeah, well, why isn't there an online footy record? Exactly. You know, so so it's, it's simple things like this where you can digitise things pretty rapidly yeah. to actually join in and be able to still share the information. Yeah. And there'll be a market for the hard copy one. If we, if we think a year or two down the track and the pandemic's over, those, are, those issues that haven't been able to get out to the public will become more collectible than the traditional ones, yeah. I sense. Yeah. Yeah. I sense, and I heard them talking equally about how difficult it will be for football players out there in the field when they don't have the crowd cheering for them. So at the end of the day, we will adjust. Um, and yes, I, I think the paradigm shift is pushing people towards a more digitised business. And I think we have in Australia been very hesitant in doing that, sometimes because of the negative press around NBN and all the other activities going out there trying to connect us. So I think the now's the time to test our connectivity and let's see what we can do with it and let's flourish as Tasmania has, who were the first to get connected to the yeah. NBN. I want to throw something to both of you. So many companies in Australia, and you know, this shows the import export show, many companies um, have dabbled in certain markets and they've started to go on that journey globally. I think with our current um, circumstances, I'd encourage all companies, whether they've thought about it or not, um, to think global, literally look at this opportunity, as you said, putting everything digitally, putting everything online, means that you can be seen by anyone anywhere in the world. And that's a, a major opportunity for companies to really prepare themselves strategically to be a global business down the track. So, um, you know, I want to ask you, Brian, obviously we've talked about digital branding and protection, but what tips and advice would you give just in general for companies who have one, they're already you know, going overseas or doing global uh, trade, but they want to. What are the things that they need to keep on top of? I, mean, I read one of your articles about a month ago on e-commerce and, and Amazon and things happening in the US. Maybe you can touch on something that sort of case study. Sure, and, th and that's the perfect one where uh, up until recently, we'd go to the shopping mall, go down the street, and also shop online. And, and Australia is probably the slowest uptake of e-commerce mm. when I do my travels to the US in particular. But right now, we're not allowed to do that. Yeah. So everyone's going online and they're shopping online. Yeah. And so they're shopping on Amazon. And Amazon, to go against the counterfeiters, require a trademark, and that takes seven months to get. So if today you said, oh, I better be on Amazon, and you, you haven't filed your trademark, you're seven months away from trading. Was this a result of the US trying to sort of trade wars, if you like? Was that sort of a... No, no, it's, it, you, it's, it's to an anti-counterfeiting campaign, okay, right. um, whereas a lot of previous ads on other social media platforms went not to the original authentic owner. Uh, this is that if you own a trademark, you can get a shop on the e-commerce platform as Amazon, and that should reduce and give consumers confidence that they're buying the original yeah. authentic Because no one really goods. talks about that here in Australia. It, it, it's, it's starting. Okay. It's starting because everyone's saying, yeah, I better sell on Amazon. Well, if you don't have your trademark, you're seven months away from even getting a spot. Wow. And I think e-commerce 
is going to increase dramatically for everything. Yeah. And Amazon at the moment in Australia is poised to take over big time, yeah. as they've done in the US. Yeah. Ernest, in, in your opinion, I mean, you talk with so many startups and scale ups in, in, in different industry segments. Yeah. How savvy are they with IP and protecting their brand? Look, it varies dramatically. I've got to be honest. A lot of them don't actually value it, so um, they don't quite understand it. I think they think it's just a logo or a, a reflection of something on a website, so as simple as a website. So first of all, they needed basic education, and Brian's the man to sort of bring them up to speed on simple things, copyrights, patents, and trademarks. So if, once you learn the fundamentals, then you can actually start to move towards it. So what they have to understand that this is just one of the building blocks of setting up any business. So it's, a, it's one component that is essential. Without it, you will get copycats. Yeah. You will get people coming into your turf yeah. and taking over your business opportunity as well. So it's something that's equally essential as, as setting up a bank account, yeah. which is yeah. what I said earlier. Because that's, that's typically yeah. the, the common mistake that I see with people as an exporter is that they think, oh, once I can afford it, I'll go to trademarks and IP, but yeah. by many stages, that's too late. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And, and, and my tips for, for the public out there that are listening would be to one, focus, be yourself, be natural and help the people around you and develop yourself. And that means actually continuing learning. Yeah. So that means actually listening to the advisors that are around you, um, checking out options. So a lot of businesses that I deal with don't check out options. They come to me, they have a shareholder group. There's obviously family and friends involved in that from time to time, and nepotism is still alive and well, I can tell you out there. So they come with an option and I'll say, I've got a fabulous you know, trade attorney or a, a, a IP attorney. Reality is you best just check the options out and find what suits you. Yeah. For each business, it could be uniquely different, uh, depending on the scale or size of the business that they're seeking to yeah. endeavour. But don't think local, think global. This well, is, is the right message. What you've just mentioned there, Ernest, is, is is what you know, yeah. I've tried to create with ATLC, is that yeah. community of experts that you can basically you know, just surround yourself with a yeah. whole plethora of supply yeah. chain, trade, logistics experts, including trademark coaching, all those type of things that anything you need to navigate growth of the business. So that immersion, if you like, of, of being in a supportive environment, Correct. being in a community where Correct. now more than ever, yeah. that we need to create different ideas yeah. with each other. Yeah, and trust your gut feel. If it yeah. feels like it's too good to be true, it probably yeah. is, you know? Yeah. And that's a common trait out there, and there are. There are a lot of sharks out in the digital sea, as, a, as I'd call it. Yeah. So it's just being, not being overtly cautious, it's being curious, looking at options, but also having sounding boards that you can go to so that you have the opportunity to qualify and say, you know, this is a good product or this is a good service or in fact this is out of sequence which is what I see quite often as well mm -hmm. where businesses will spend marketing and branding right up front no minimum viable product and expect to make you know to become a, yeah. a uh, unicorn mm -hmm. sort of stuff so it's grounding them back to say yeah that's great you've done that let's park that mm -hmm. and let's focus on the fundamentals of building a minimum viable product then we'll come back we haven't lost that yeah. We're, we're, there's still value in that. We'll come back and resurrect that at a later stage. Yeah. Oh, that's what I love about what you do is that yeah. reality coaching yeah. Yeah. is you know, people are so, and I'm, I'm guilty of this. I think many of us are. Yeah. Is that you're you're working in the business, not on the business. Yeah. Whereas having you there yeah. with, with the blinkers off, yeah. you can actually see. Oh, well, keep up to date with all the latest innovations. Yeah. I know the articles you send out. They're, they're really powerful. And if you get you know one or two percent yeah. from a single article. That can literally change a business or transform your idea. Correct, correct. Be open yes. to new inputs. Yeah, and be hungry okay. for it as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so I think you know, there's definitely so many changes and I think things will change permanently. Yeah. Um, hopefully for the better, I'm pretty sure they will. I think yeah. that you know, as, a, as a society, as a community, as a global community, I think we'll all learn the, some, some really strong benefits out of the situation in many months and years to come. But I think there's also the opportunity to, to reskill ourselves, to upskill ourselves. Definitely. Uh, as employees, employers, as communities. Um, and I think that whole change now to have a dialogue, and this is where this whole online presence or digital presence is, is, a, is a shift. I know with, with your coffee catch-up, yep. um, I'm a huge fan of your coffee catch-up, so I get, you know, get I've got right through plenty of notes. <laughs> um, when we do that now digitally, uh, it, it does take more discipline. I was on a Zoom call yesterday, yeah. um, and you've got to you know, 
block out the distractions, we're going out and we're going on the home. And, you know, I had my neighbour literally doing whippersnipping in the grass. <laughs> and it's true. You know? yeah, yeah. Well, those, those noise cancelling headphones are the best investment I've made, to be honest, that, that with the kids running around, the dog. <laughs> And, and everything else, it's, it's important to have the right equipment, yeah. really, fundamentally. And it's very basic, it's not expensive to buy these things to be able to operate and function effectively. Yeah. In fact, I might even get a second screen. <laughs> so that's how I'm a bit of a dinosaur. So to, to help with that level of what you're talking about, keeping on track with things. So this morning I was running an event online on Zoom. At the same time I had the screen up posting on LinkedIn. At the same time I was pinging emails or messages, SMSs back to some of the participants, just cueing them to help nudge them towards the messaging that they need to give out there to the public to help them actually understand the topic we were covering. Fantastic. So, yeah. Well, what I'd like to do, if you know, uh, uh, sort of questions out notice to yeah. both of you, but part of the HLC thing, we are doing a lot of our events now, we'll have to be forced to be webinars. Yeah. So I'd love to talk to you off, off air about some creating some webinars around each of your expertise, yeah. um, that'd be great. But um, thank you thank both you. so much for, for coming on this morning's show. It's been really valuable uh, to myself, but hopefully to all of you and the viewers there. You know, it's an important part of getting through this, this situation, making sure your digital yeah. brand is secure and strong, making sure the strategy is right. So before we go to a break and, and wrap up this segment, what's the best way for people to get in contact with yourself, Brian? Please. Oh, well, thank you. Lawrence, a uh, pleasure to be a part of it and, and we're all working together. So Brian at trademark.ventures yep. or trademark.ventures. Well, hopefully, if I've got it right, you're right, trademark.ventures in Google. Yeah. And <laughs> but I'm not in TikTok. No, you get no, no <laughs> dances from my end. Thank right. you. Thanks. And Ernest, what's the best way for people to get? Oh, thanks again, Lawrence. A pleasure. Um, the best way is probably LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, that's got my contact details on there, but es at sipvictoria.com is my normal email. Look, I'm easy to find, yeah. so I'm not hard to find. I'm equally not on TikTok. I'm not on <laughs> Facebook by choice no, either, no, no, either. So, right. so, but I am available. I'm active both on Twitter and, and, and LinkedIn. Fantastic. Well, yeah. thanks again. Um, looking forward to having uh, some great webinars with both of you in, in the coming months as, as well and helping guide so many of our audience uh, through this hard time. So thanks again. Okay. Um, We've got a great uh, another couple of speakers coming up straight after the break, so stick around and we'll talk around data security, cyber security, and the important strategies you need to understand when you're remote working from home in this situation. So we'll see you after the break.